So, and what is acceptance? It's basically a, a way of relaxing. It's not some weird mystical state. Acceptance is recognizing that there is something that is a little contracted, that feels a little tight. There's an insistence in your thinking. There's an insistence in your focus. There is a little nod in your attention, in the stream of your consciousness. There's a little nod. There's a little uh, distortion, a little uh, deviation, a little nod. When you relax, when you, first of all, when you recognize it, it's important, again, know yourself so that you can accept it more fully. So know that this knot, this feeling of resistance is there. And as you are aware of that feeling, that knot, already it starts to release, no? Because when you're in that blind state where you're just like, you know, you don't feel really good, but you're not really, you're not really taking a pause to acknowledge and be present to the fact that you don't feel optimal. Then it's just kind of running the show and your whole day is this ping ponging back and forth between different forms of resistance to different kinds of mental, spiritual, emotional, relational objects that occur within the unified dreamscape of awareness. I know those are a lot of words, but just kind of let it come through. Don't try to understand everything I'm saying. Just kind of let it be a transmission of you. Just kind of dance and relax on the waves of my words because they do have a power if you allow them to just massage those knots out of your system. You don't have to understand what I'm saying. There is a transmission quality to those words as well. So when those knots release through acknowledgement that there is a little tightness and then an acceptance of that, a forgiveness of that, a loving approach in your awareness towards that tension, it is like you're melting, like this ice cube is kind of like melting back into the ocean, the waterness that it was made of to begin with. So we could say that self-judgment is God in a condensed or, or contracted state, like an ice cube. You're just kind of swimming around in the ocean made of salt water, an ice cube made of salt water, made of ocean, ocean in the form of an ice cube, just kind of bobbing on the surface, feeling like it has this separate, you know, this edge to it, this skin line, this separation. And when we relax, first acknowledge, hey, I feel a little tight. I feel like I'm this little ice cube bobbing on it. Something about it feels unnatural. I don't feel quite blended with all that there is. <laughs> when we acknowledge that contraction, that tightness, and we bring this loving awareness to it, this accepting awareness, it's a relaxation. It's a letting go. It's just a relaxation. That's all acceptance is. Notice a tightness, <sighs> forgive it. Relaxation is synonymous with forgiveness. I love the word forgiveness. It's like you're giving up, you're giving away, you're giving back, you're forgiving. You're giving for God, forgiving. So forgive yourself, give it back to source, give it back to the nature of what it consists. Don't tightly hold on to certain components, experiences, emotions inside your dreamscape. Let it be a full dance, a full dreamscape. That is this unified field of miraculous illusion, miraculous perception. Like how, how is this even occurring as an experience? How are you even experiencing this? Out of all the infinite possibilities, why this? How this? We don't notice this often. We're so in our matrix. I off, I'd say roughly half, half of the year I spent in a more isolated uh, environment or condition and half of the year, roughly, on and off, not necessarily six months, six months, but roughly six out of 12 months per year, I spent more time in a more isolated, like sort of away from city life, away from the matrix, the densest part of the matrix. And it's just either me by myself or with a couple of people or with the team, which is a different frequency. It's a different kind of consciousness. So it's still kind of not plugged into the matrix, not right there. So, and then half the time I spent time, uh, quote unquote, in the matrix, <laughs> walking around the city, sitting, you know, uh, the groceries and stuff like that. And the contrast of that going back and forth, back and forth over the years, it's amazing. I mean, it's miraculous. Just the other day I was sitting in this little village eating something and it's, it's hard to describe, but it's like most people have just this complete bubble around them. It's like they're in inside of a bubble and they're oblivious. First of all, they're oblivious to the miracle of I am. They're, they don't recognize, they're not stopping to recognize that they exist. It's just not a topic. 
it, probably months has, have gone by since they've ever wondered why they even exist or how come they even exist or even that they exist. When we don't recognize that we exist and how weirdly miraculous that is, what it is, we're typically just in the bubble, just living the life, just living the program, just bumping around against objects. And that's why there's so little gratitude typically in the human world. There's so little recognition of the magic and the mystery and the unity and the love and the magic and the potential that is every mo so rich in every moment. And people don't recognize this hardly ever. And therefore they're just living in a bubble of concepts, bubble of concepts, interpretations, gremlin, operational, operational, operational. And they're so conflated with it, you know, like a, like the background paper of, of a sticker paper that you have to sort of separate. It's a transparent piece of paper attached to a, to a solid white piece of paper, like a sticker. And it, but it's so conflated, you can't really see the difference. Most people can't see the difference. They think they are their thinking process. They believe, they feel, they are enmeshed, they're in a bubble, in a zombie-like state. The matrix. The matrix is just your own mind. It's not really out there. It's not being aware. That's what the matrix is. And automatic pilot, automatic pilot, automatic pilot, and learning in this state, in this sort of zombified state of the bubble, is very slow and automatic. You don't really learn as much as you would love to learn at a soul level, at a spiritual level, because you're just not attentive enough. You're not appreciative and grateful enough for the fact that you exist, for source, for God, which is what all this is. What else would it be made of? It has to come back down to this one source. It has to. All things has to have emerged, has to have appeared out of an infinite potential. Call it God, if you will. Call it the creator, call it source. And right now it's staring you in the face because all there is is that. So literally every single cell of your experience, every single sensation, every single thought, no matter how fast firing and chaotic it might be at times, it's all just bouncing light particles that are just reflecting God back to itself. It's trying to remind you, first of all, that you exist. What did God say to Moses? I am that I am. What's your name? I am that I am. What am I? I am the fact that I am. The fact that the experience and fact that you are, which you cannot deny right now, you cannot deny that you exist. If you hear my voice, you must exist. Prior to anything, any content, any interpretation, you must be there. You must be here. You must be. So you are, that much is obvious. But the fact or experience that you are is what you are. I am that I am. I am the fact that I am. That's one interpretation of that statement. What I am is the fact that I am. What I am is that I am. So if you can get in touch with, this is a more sort of direct path to starting to experience, intuitively feel the presence of God in your own consciousness, in your own hearness, is by simply slowing down the mind, just like relaxing the tension of the thinking gremlin, just like, just know, just for a few seconds, just know, shut up that little gremlin in the backseat, just like, just know, I have no interest in anything you, dear mind, that I think is me, but is not, have to tell me right now. I'm not interested in myself for just a few seconds. For a few seconds, I'm going to belong to God, not to myself, to God. Because what's myself? I don't even know what myself is. At this point, it's just this raging, cute, but kind of outdated gremlin. So let me assume that I do not know what I am, that I am conflated, that I am intertwined in ways I do not fully see yet. With this program, the substitute parent, this thinking mind, this conceptualizing, labeling mind. So let me say to myself, no, stop it. Say stop to yourself. For the next few seconds, I do not belong to myself. I belong to existence itself, to God. And in that openness, in, that, in those few seconds of stopping the mind, or at least stopping any interest in your thinking sense of self, 
in that openness, suddenly a space opens up, a deeper dimension of naked awareness becomes aware of its own isness, its own existing. I am that I am. Suddenly you know that you are. And that is God. God said, I am that I am. This means God is accessible because you are aware of my voice. Therefore you must be, and you can recognize that you are. And the more you allow your attention to submerge back and allow the ice cube to melt back into the waterness, the ocean, is the essential recognition of I am, of I exist. Experientially, just recognize it. Don't think it. It's a good start to think I am, but it's a deeper dimension. Right now, you can be conscious of the very experiential fact that you exist. This is sort of a direct practice into recognizing God. And this will, over time, unleash more and more, it will open your heart, the gates to love. It's here right now, it's hearing my voice. It's what's speaking to you, and it's what's hearing the words. It shines through all the definitions of your mind, regardless of whether you like this or not like this. It is there, vividly, self-illuminated, illuminated by its own nature, by its own power of sentience, of cognizance, of knowing. And so allow yourself to be enlightened from the inside out by saying no for a few seconds, a couple times an hour. Just say radically no. Not interested in anything I have to say to myself right now. Then you will see you are not what you think you are. Then this deeper domain of God will open up and then the little gremlin will simply be accepted to death. God will love your gremlin to death. You don't have to fight it. You just have to open up to God's love. Because then it's like holding a candle flame in front of the sun. Right now you think you are smart and intelligent and you know things. That's the little candle flame. It's a little gremlin that's protected you for so long. There's a little spark of light of I know who I am. But it's really the arrogance that you've been training yourself to believe in. And when you suddenly turn away, turn the other cheek, turn away from this little candle light, as hard as that might be in the beginning because you're so attached to this little source of light, this little control mechanism of I know who I am and what is real and what's not real and what's true and what's not true. But if you dare for just a few seconds to say no, I'm not interested in the light of the ego. I'm not interested in the shenanigans of my thinking self, of what I think I know. I am done for the next few seconds. I'm done with arrogance. I do not know. And you turn your gaze towards the I am that I am, the presence, the sun, the light of the sun. You'll be laughing at the flame like the sun does. It does not compute. It does not compete. It does not compare. And so by knowing God, you don't have to worry about your gremlin. It will naturally dissolve. It will naturally surrender. The only reason you're holding on to your candle with that little light source is because it's the only light source you know consciously. If you begin to know a much greater, vaster, infinite, eternal light source consciously, then you will naturally shift your investment and allegiance and interest from the thinking self to the timeless presence of the Creator. And therefore, you will become the Creator once again, which you never really left, but you created some layers of illusion. You were staring blindly at this little spot of light of what you know. God's in the unknown, my friends. It's in the infinite mystery. As Ra says, it all begins and ends in mystery. No teaching can compete with the Alpha and the Omega of the mystery of God. It is a timeless infinite mystery. It can never fully be known. It can be 